Stan Energy Man here, Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technology as part of the Department of Business, Economic Development, Tourism, State of Hawaii, I think. Anyway, welcome to Stan Energy Man this Friday, Aloha Friday. Hope you're going to have a good weekend. We're going to start it off with a great discussion about something we don't talk a whole lot about, and that's making energy using something called differential temperatures and thermal. We talked about OTEC with Dr. Um, Hans Kroc a long time ago, and this is a kind of a similar technology, but it's just another great clean way to make energy and use waste heat from things to, to make electricity. So we have as a guest today, Mr. Michael Markrich, right? Yes. Got it right. An old friend, Mitch Muin from HNEI. Hello. Welcome, Bob. gentlemen. Thank you. Got to have you on the show. Thanks, Dan. And it's, uh, it's good. We, we don't get to, to hit different kinds of energy sources too often. And this is one that amazes me because um, it actually is really simple, old school. Um, but in the high-tech world, it's, it's really pretty remarkable and can give you quite a bit of power. So let's start off. Um, Michael, could you tell, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started working with uh, Granite Power and uh, your background? Sure. Uh, my background is... I'm a writer and economist here, and I was doing a number of studies on different, all these different aspects uh, as an independent contractor of, of different aspects of the Hawaii economy and, uh, you know, on the ocean, on agriculture, uh, tourism, and sooner or later all of these studies came back to energy. Right. You know, it just was a repeated theme, you know, the cost of energy is so high in Hawaii, it's higher than everywhere, it, you know, in the United States practically. And, and you know, it, you know it, it's, it's a major cost to, to doing business here. Yeah, it's a and, big import. And, and, and so, you know, I, I began thinking, you know, it, are there some transformational technologies? And I, I became involved uh, with a company in Seattle called uh, Microplanet, and uh, they, they make a very advanced kind of voltage regulator, and that was a startup. And then uh, I was doing that, and then the opportunity came to get involved with Granite Power, which is a startup from Australia. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I, I started working with Granite Power, and uh, Granite's a very interesting company. It's uh, uh, very dynamic. It's, it's a startup 10 years. They've been working at this, and basically they started uh, with geothermal in the outback of Australia. Mm -hmm. and. Um, they started with, you know, what, what could they do with heat? And, you know, uh, there was waste to energy heat, but you know, are there other ways of using heat? You know, you know, is there a lot of heat that comes from diesel engines that's not being used that could be right. used for something, you know, and, and a lot of it, or from, you know, the, um, um, from a LNG gasifier, gasifier yeah, you know, sure. there's enormous heat, right? Yeah. And it's just expanded into the atmosphere. So um, they were thinking, oh, uh, let's go and find uh, places in the outback, like the mines, that generate like a, a lot of uh, a lot of heat because you know they have a lot of diesels and they're doing things and they're they're hauling things. So um, they they uh, began experimenting and they they, they found that uh, they could actually stick a um, a small generator on the side of a of a larger diesel generator and, and uh, they get about ten percent of that uh, mm -hmm. uh, energy that was expanded and and turn that into power. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, all of a sudden, then the dynamics of that became clear. So if you had, you know, uh, uh, 10 megawatts, you could actually create a megawatt of mm. power, which is enough for 650 sure. homes. Yeah. So all of a sudden, that math became clearer and clearer. And they began working on this uh, very exciting technology that they had developed at a university at Newcastle in Australia. And it was like, you know, uh, steam is a very efficient, very... Uh, well thought out way of uh, using energy. You, know, you, mm -hmm. you, you you use coal and then you, you heat water and develop steam and you know and, and, and this has been going back a hundred years and people have been doing this very well. Sure. They have a lot of practice doing it, particularly in the British Isles and Australia and Canada. You know, mm -hmm. and um, so then the thought was, well, 
why not use uh, something different, more efficient than water? Why don't we use something like a refrigerant, uh, which you know, we can mm. go down to an even lower temperature? Mm -hmm. and, and then that became the essence of granite power. How can you make this work? And so then they started like, these experimental projects where they say, well, uh, we can do it off a diesel engine, but can we do it off solar panels? Can we, do, mm. can we make a solar field? And can we take that heat and power something? And so what they did was uh, they went to this um, municipal pool uh, in, outside of uh, Newcastle in Australia, and, and it was cold all the time. And they thought, well, maybe we can get permission to heat this pool because that's something yeah. no one will object to. Right. And so what they did was then they, 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 they uh, put these solar panels out on a field, and they um, built a little uh, concrete structure, and they put big rocks in it and filled it with oil. Mm. And then uh, that became essentially their, 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 their heat storage center. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they got the heat from the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the no, from the from the solar panels. Oh, from the solar panels. Pan panels. And then they, they, heat, they, the oil. they heat the oil. And, and then the rocks held the heat. Mm -hmm. And then from that, they hooked up the, the, uh, um, the, heat, the, the heat exchanger. The and well, it worked, powered the pool. And actually, the pool became too hot. Mm. So uh, they had to lower it, but but the people were so excited that all of a sudden they could use the pool again. So you know this, this led to uh, more projects, and uh, there's a, a, a copper's plant, um, there's a, you know a, a, a chemical plant in Australia, and then uh, then they were thinking, oh, we're doing this with isolated places uh, in Australia, which are like islands. So why not go to an island? Now, why not go to Hawaii, which has such incredibly expensive power? Mm -hmm. Let's do it there. And so then they came here three years ago, and uh, I got to meet them. And uh, they're, they're very dynamic people, uh, and uh, they're uh, very resourceful. And they began thinking about all of these different things they could do, you know, diesel engines, mm -hmm. uh, gas fires, all these kinds of, you know, different, we've been looking for applications. And now uh, we have uh, discussions going on throughout the Western Pacific, discussing things with people in Hawaii, in Alaska, um, in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody basically who has um, an old diesel can use this as a means of transitioning <coughs> to renewables. Because mm. it's, it's very hard for a lot of small utilities to instantly say, okay, we don't want to use diesel gas and diesel right, fuel right. anymore. <coughs> uh, we're going to go completely <coughs> renewable. Because, uh, but what they can do is, if they can take 10% of the power that they have and uh, save that revenue and put that revenue aside, mm -hmm. they can transition over 10 years and pay for renewables. Right. So that's, that's the position that we, we're, we're, we're really presenting our technology as, okay. as a transitional step to renewables. Use the most of waste heat that's not being used, mm -hmm. and uh, let's change... Um, the world that way. Let's change the okay. world towards re renewables. Okay. So, Mitch, I, I I know you started off in Canada flying submarines. Yes. But, um, and flying underwater. Yeah, flying underwater. <laughs> but um, you're working at UH now, HNEI. So, give us a little bit of your background so that everybody has your credentials. Yeah. Well, I'm the hydrogen systems program manager at HNEI, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, mm -hmm. and. Um, I'm doing uh, big uh, ticket projects, so I'm installing a hydrogen production and fueling station on the Big Island at the Nalha, mm -hmm. right beside the Kona Airport, where we'll be supplying hydrogen to a Helion bus there, and plus trucking hydrogen up to Volcano National Park. Mm -hmm. So I've been in the hydrogen game for about 30 years, and so I came out here to uh, initiate this, these kinds of programs at the demonstration scale mm -hmm. here in Hawaii. Great. So what's really neat for me about this technology is <clears throat> you mentioned that it starts off as capturing heat from a diesel engine. Right. Well, heat is just another energy source. So diesel and internal combustion engines generally are around 20-something percent efficient if they're running at their best capacity. And that other 80 percent is almost all heat that's lost through friction, heat, things like that. And if you can capture that, you're really just capturing the energy that's being wasted by an internal yeah, combustion right. engine. That's right. So you're taking this heat, and you're running it through an organic Rankin cycle system, which is totally Greek to me and probably almost everybody else that doesn't do energy stuff. And you've kind of described it, and it has to do with temperature differentials. And you talked about using a refrigerant to in the mix to maybe even make it more... Um, 
useful in terms of temperature range. Right. So let's let's talk a little bit about that in detail. So kind of take a step by step. We have the waste heat coming off right. and heating up um, heating up an or oil off yeah. of a solar yeah, array right, like right, a, right, a, right, a right, concentrator right, 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 array right, right. that's giving you a hot like 600, 500, 700 degrees temperature. So I mean, a car, an exhaust off of the car is about that much. Yeah. So it's temperatures in that range, and then you're you're taking that hot gas, cooling it down, and then letting and expanding back out. So the, the expansion from a liquid to a gas, and that expansion, just like water to steam, mm. is what drives your turbine and gives right, you the power. Right, yeah. So why don't you just kind of take all those pieces and put them together for us in a nice tight package and okay. describe how the cycle works. This is the part where I say I'm not an engineer. Okay. Okay. So, so, so there's can, a, there's you can a count to Mitch if you need yeah, to. Okay. Uh, so so um, this organic ranking cycle has been around for about oh, yeah. 100 years. A long time. A long time. Because people have been thinking about this. You know, yeah. They've been thinking about, you know, like a typical, as you say, a typical... Uh, engine, you know, is only using, you know, maybe 20%, yeah. right? Everything else is just wasted. It's, it's just lost, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what do you do with all that? It's other, a problem. It's a big problem. And, mm -hmm. we, and we just live with that problem because yeah. we've, we've just accepted it, right? So mm -hmm. people do different things and they, and they, they try uh, to make things tighter. They try to, to increase the capacity of boilers. They, mm -hmm. you know, try, they, they try all of these different things. And uh, the idea of... Um, Using this organic Rankine cycle, it came about because people wanted to use geothermal mm -hmm. in Australia because it's, there's a lot of that. But um, and so geothermal heat is about 120 C, which is about 248 mm -hmm. Fahrenheit, something like that. So that's that's about the the lowest that you know we can go. Is usually our, our, our comfortable spot is about 300, 400, you know, in terms of the heat. Okay. Uh, um, and you know, and so the um, you, you take this heat and you put it through, as you said before, you know, you know, uh, um, a heat exchanger, right? It goes, it goes. There's to a, take something that's a liquid. They take it to a liquid and make it turn into a it gas. Is right. So, the, so they, so the, the the liquid is pumped through uh, um, this through the place, the heat source. Mm -hmm. So the the, refri the refrigerant becomes hotter. Mm -hmm. It goes and expands. It expands, right? And then and this this sets all kind of things in motion. Mm -hmm. Gets the turbines turning. Gets the turbines and turning. Gets the generator turning. And gets the generator turning. And it goes in a loop, right? And mm -hmm. then and then uh, it goes through the condenser, and then pulls it back down to pull, a liquid. Pulls it back down, right? Mm -hmm. And then it goes back and it's pumped towards the heat source again. Mm -hmm. So you keep having the the liquid expanding and contracting, just like steam engines, that's right. the water's expanding that's right. to steam, and then usually being exhausted, so you have to keep pumping water into a that's steam right. engine. That's right. Okay, and, and so, so, it's, so it's not uncommon, and not, like I say, it's old school, because you still, it's just like a steam engine, or very similar to a steam engine, just a couple tweaks yeah, to it, like you don't right. let the liquid go, you that's actually right. keep it in the cycle, yeah. and keep it in the closed loop. Yeah. And so the heat exchanger, basically though, just, it's like, it's like a radiator, it has the liquid going through, um, coils and then it has an outer chamber that has another right. material right, right, that's, right, that's right, capturing right, right, and right, right. so you're only exchanging the heat you're not combining the liquids or right, combining right, the, right, right. the the elements together now, now here's where it gets really neat is what, what Mitch is doing with, with, with the fuel cells right so where you can go to uh, say um, a waste dump a, a landfill where mm -hmm. there's gas just emanating right. and that's oftentimes just being flared up and right, just right. lost completely right right and uh, you can stick one of these on there, and you can have a completely closed system, mm -hmm. and you can generate power from the, you can train, you can generate electricity that you can then use to create fuel cells. And the fuel cells can then be placed in buses, and then uh, you can run, uh, you know, maybe well, a quarter of a bus system on this. Mm -hmm. Continually, so it's just you're using all, uh, uh, all of this um, this waste that's coming from a landfill, mm -hmm. and you're multiplying its value exponentially right. by uh, by powering buses with what will otherwise cost you a, a, a large amount in diesel fuel. Yep. So isn't isn't that yeah <coughs> one of the key elements? Sorry. Okay, we're going to take Power a quick, quick 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 break, and then we're going to have Mitch come back and give us the academic answer that the 
accountant and the art, fine arts major haven't quite articulated <laughs> well enough. And we'll have them just talk about that in about 45 seconds. Yeah. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to talk story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Waihe. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan the Energy Man here with Michael Mark Rich from Granite Energy, which is Granite Power. Granite Power, which is where we got our rock solid energy title from. Just the plan words. I'm trying to be creative here. But um, we were talking about the organic rank and cycle, how it's a lot like a steam engine. And we're just cutting into Mitch's scientific definition and explanation yeah. of how this all works. So, Mitch, hit it. Yeah. So, uh, one of the big advantages of this uh, system is that it's a closed cycle. In other words, you don't, uh, you have this working fluid that's totally encapsulated in their unit and it doesn't mix, like you said, just towards the end of the last segment, it doesn't mix with anything else. So it's pure and uh, it doesn't get contaminated. Whereas landfill gas is all full of all sorts of nasty chemical stuff that you have to clean up, like siloxanes, which is essentially um, like uh, sand. That's uh, you know you get you get that from your cosmetics and all sorts of things that go into the landfill. So if you just took that landfill gas and ran it in a diesel engine, eventually all the components inside that engine would get this coating of uh, silica or like uh, glass inside the engine, it starts breaking off, and then your engine's like written off, mm -hmm. and you spoil your engine. Whereas with this one, what you do is you capture the heat in this closed loop cycle and generate your electricity, so you don't have to have all the cost of cleaning up that gas. And mm -hmm. like Michael says, all we're doing then is producing electricity, which we can use then to run an electrolyzer, which breaks water down into hydrogen and oxygen. We capture mm -hmm. the, the hydrogen, and we use that in buses, to run fuel cells, and so then you can run your buses. But the, the key element is that the organic rank and cycle is this closed system, and you never have to open it up. It, it can operate for like 30 or 40 mm -hmm. years without any maintenance at all, because mm -hmm. it only has like two bearings, and they're on a, they're you know, like uh, mag magnetic bearings, so they're mm -hmm. not rubbing against anything. Okay, so let's let's um, try and do a practical application yeah. and we say okay we take the hot lava rocks mm -hmm. and we take a big solar collector field mm -hmm. uh, and maybe even some geothermal on the side because we happen to have yeah, some okay. and we have a basically a swimming pool full of lava rocks and oil heating okay. up okay and during the daytime it's getting really hot maybe even up into six or seven hundred degrees and then you're storing your energy in that heat yeah and at night, you're running your Rankine cycle. So basically, you can take take this and make it a base load power. You yeah, can absolutely. you could run it 24 hours a day that's because right. Yeah, that's right. And you know, and, and batteries have all, all kinds of issues. Issues, right? You know, and they don't last that long. And there are things you have to worry about, yeah. and they decay and replace. You have to worry about all that pollution and yeah. everything. Whereas you know, rocks have a certain yeah. uh, benefit that. And I've been to the same. big island. They just happen to have a couple rocks <laughs> laying around. So yeah, it's, it, it is, it's pretty, or it, I'd call it an elegant solution. It, yes, you, know, it is. you have the ability to store energy in rocks you know, versus batteries. That, that's not all we do, but, but you know, I, I think that oftentimes it's, it's so, um, these things are so complex that we mm -hmm. can only think of them in complex terms when sometimes the, 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 the easiest solution are the simplest ones. Yes. No, you're exactly right. So. That, that just seems to be one of the, the common sense options that the, the utility companies would have to store energy, especially with intermittent right. solar or, or you know, right. things like that. Right. Right. If they have an intermittent source and they can store the energy as heat uh, and using a system like yours, mm -hmm. then it's mm -hmm. available. And mm -hmm. you can push as much out as you need, depending on, and you can turn the, the, the cycle uh, up or down to, to match whatever power generation you need to put out, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I, I think the other point to make is that we, we have these landfills and uh, this uh, uh, this gas in the landfills. I mean, this is very valuable, and we're just 
um, we'll burn it. burning it and sending it up into the yeah. atmosphere. And we're, we're you know worrying about global warming and climate change, but mm -hmm. you know, we're doing it. Yeah. You know, we, we, you know, why aren't we using this for something else? Yeah. The good news is sending it out in methane is way worse than sending it out in heat, but it's still sending away energy yeah. that you should be making electricity. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So, um, are there any examples you see coming to Hawaii right now? Are there any things that maybe Granite Power is looking at to introduce this technology into in, in any of the islands? Specific? Are there any specific projects that they're looking at right now? Are they proposing any? Well, we, we are proposing, but they're still in the proposal stage, so I shouldn't you talk, can't about, talk them. about them. Yeah, okay. yeah. But okay. there's some very exciting ideas that we're well, developing. Good. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I, and yeah. I realize that when you're in that, that delicate negotiation stage, you can't, can't do a whole lot of detailed discussion. But that's good. I'm hoping that the utilities are part of these discussions. They are. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Good. And are you you're looking at examples on all the islands, um, possibly? Uh, well, actually, some islands, you know, all, this is just used for this on all the islands. Absolutely, there right. is. There is. Uh, Does it and, scale and well? It, it scales very well, yeah. And you know, the, the, the question is on, on, on some islands, uh, the need is greater than others. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and of course, the, the smaller neighbor islands, the, the power is more expensive. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the transformational costs, the transitional costs are higher. So I think, you know, those are the places where the application is probably the best, the most immediate. Yeah, I hate, I hate to ask people questions that I haven't already talked to them about, but, and I hate to do public math, but I'll, I'll ask this question with full knowledge that it's probably not going to be answered here because it's hard, but when you take this kind of system and compare it to photovoltaics in terms of um, acres of land needed or size of your field, your solar collector field needed to generate power, how does it compare to like photovoltaic or, or anything like that, or wind power? in terms of like acres of land for how much power do you happen to know that at all? If you don't, I, I don't want to hold it to you because that's more math than I could do in my head in yeah. a couple of seconds. But I, you know, I, I would just say there are um, some specific places where this would work best. Okay. And there, there are other places where combinations of, of them okay. work better. Well, I don't think it's either or. Is it, so is it a space limitation or a, what makes it work better in some places than other places? Um, is it the amount of space you have available of, for collectors and things like that? The amount of space, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, the, and uh, of course, the amount of sun, you know, okay. that, that kind of thing. How, how, okay. how cloudy yeah. is it? On the windward thing? side, yeah. it would be as good yeah. as yeah. on the leeward. Okay. Mitch, have, have you seen any, any of the, your experiments at h &E or anything that focus on this kind of technology? Uh, we haven't looked specifically at this technology. I mean, um, you know, I'm, as you know, I'm continually conceptualizing sure. projects of how I might be able to use it. So, for example... And you might be in negotiations with him. We can't uh, no, 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 not, not yet. So, um, but, uh, you know, the landfill gas is really an interesting one. Mm. Also, um, anything that uses biomass, uh, you know, um, and, and has this waste heat as a, as a byproduct is, is uh, a target. Um, over at the uh, Natural Energy Lab on the Big Island, of course, they have, it, they have a big uh, solar collector field up there, which... Uh, Unfortunately, it was not successful, but could be maybe regenerated and you know produce. But the you know the key element is the quality of the of your input energy source or your heat. So that's why landfill gas is great because the flared gas is really hot, or our sewage treatment plants, which also uh, flare sure. off gas as well. Sure. So those are like interesting sources. Mm -hmm. We have a coal plants and we have a. You know the uh, H power plant. They all produce waste heat that right. you know goes up the stack. Like seventy percent of the heat of a uh, you know of a steam plant is waste heat going yeah. out the chimney, and that's a huge then amount of H, energy. I H mean, think power. About it. We're just throwing it away. Three thousand ton a day H power plant. Yeah, they oh. produce uh, what ninety megawatts is their uh, yeah. capacity. And they're still throwing away heat. They're throwing away heat because it's a thermal process. They're basically mm -hmm. burning all this garbage in a furnace generating steam to run steam turbines. So it's almost the same as burning oil, mm -hmm. except that, you know, you're capturing your waste, which is a lot cheaper than, mm -hmm. than the oil. So. But, there, but we could still use their excess heat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So anybody, or just a diesel engine plant. Sure. Like I think you're working with uh, uh, some Pacific Islands that have, you know, most of the Pacific yeah. Islands have big diesel generators that just supply like Hawaii. Their heat. Just like Hawaii. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Okay. Well, being that you have an economics background, you probably know my friend 
Brubaker, sure. my neighbor. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to get him to cut his trees down in his yard, but he won't do it. Uh, anyway, yeah. but, well, but well. economics is a big part of this. Right. And every time we talk about energy, we start with energy efficiency. Right. And this is, again, a way of making waste heat into a product, meaning it's more efficient. We, we're using more of that energy towards producing the electricity that we need. And when it comes to an economic impact for Hawaii, can, can you kind of give us a snapshot of all the oil we import means all those dollars are leaving for Indonesia or the Middle right, East or right, wherever. Right. What, is, what would be, if you can give us a, a kind of a rough gouge as to what would be the economic impact of Hawaii if that bill was just gone? If we suddenly found ourselves waking up next week and everybody had solar and or we were using right, all right, the renewables right, we right, could right, right, right. and we weren't sending all of our money out of the state to buy energy. Well, what kind of what kind right. of things would we see in our state that would that would I mean, what would be the real economic impact? I mean, I, I think that people would still have costs because it wouldn't be like everything would be free sure. because you have to support the grid. Sure. You have to support the grid, you have to support the electrical company, you have to support the engineers that run the electrical company and, you know, um, none of this comes cheaply. Sure. And, and so there, there's, there's there's that and but it, I mean, from the standpoint of our world and the climate and and the fact that we don't have to expend these enormous sums and send them out mm -hmm. that that gives us more investment capital to put into things yeah, in Hawaii. That's so where I, I was focused. So on that, I think that, kind that of on that's the macroeconomic that, side. You that, know? That, that's that's what you'd be looking at. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden they'd be able to <laughs> substitute you know, instead of mm -hmm. spending money on things that are you know on outside the state. You can you can you know invest in things in the state and and maybe this would pro provide more jobs because you'd be building more of this solar infrastructure or. or uh, renewable, so energy. Renewable, renewable energy infrastructure, uh, and and you know we'd be able to develop new ways of doing things, and and, and maybe you know we could become you know like a, a little bit like and, and this is not a very good example because all of a sudden Iceland found itself with all these renewables, it yeah. found itself gosh incredibly wealthy. It became all of a sudden like this country which had no money and just lived off basically codfish suddenly became like the Saudi Arabia, yeah. North Atlantic, and so of course then they immediately went into banking and lost everything. <laughs> but 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 but. Uh, they did go into that was a, that was a, a sobering process, yeah. and they used this to go into things like developing uh, computer games, mm. developing high technology, right. developing all kind of industries, a film industry, in all these things using intellectual capital that they were free to do in Iceland, that, that people would have thought impossible before. So I think you can you can think of it. Sounds that, a lot like Hawaii. That's right. So I think. If you did this, you know, you could think in terms of freeing up a lot of the great ideas that people have and all of a sudden finding a larger pool of capital and people willing to invest in them. Great. We've got 30 seconds left, and I'm going to leave those to Mitch to give us his final words of wisdom on what we could do to make Hawaii a little bit cleaner and greener using this kind of technology. Well, like I said, you know, we can't afford to just waste 70% of the oil that we import just by ejecting heat up the smokestack. So if we want to get to 100% renewables and be totally self-sufficient, you know, we, we do not have the luxury of throwing away 70% of that barrel of oil just in heat. So this technology is one of the technologies that we can use to uh, harvest that waste heat and offset our energy costs and achieve this 100% um, you know, energy uh, for Hawaii. Perfect. And there you go. You got it right from the horse's mouth there. Granite power and Mitch Ewan, powerful combination. Like, thanks for being here. I, thank Michael, you. thanks for coming on, Mitch, thank you. Thanks, Sam. And um, hope you gained a little bit of knowledge on how we can be even more efficient than we already are with, uh, with heat sources, which um, I think most of us just take for granted that uh, we just throw it away, just like a lot of the energy that we should be capturing. So until next week, Standard Energy Man signing off, and we'll see you next Friday. Aloha.